نے انشاء نے ایک جگہ لکھا تھا کہ کراچی یونیورسٹی کے طالب علموں کی لیاقت کے بارے میں کہ ان کی اتنی لیاقت ہے کہ ایک مقابلے میں وہ باقی یونیورسٹی کے طالب علموں سے تیسرے نمبر پر آئے جبکہ دوسری یونیورسٹیوں کے طالب علم پہلے یا دوسرے نمبر سے آگے نہ بڑھ سکے اسی ایک جامع کے خونہار طالب علم نے یہ بھی بتایا تھا کہ سکندر اعظم نے ہندوستان پر سترہ حملے کیے تھے سومنات پر اس پر ذرا سا اختلاف ہو گیا تھا کیونکہ ایک طالبہ کا اصرار تھا کہ یہ سکندر اعظم نے نہیں کیے تھے یہ بابر نے کیے تھے تو اب معلوم ہوا کہ اس قسم کے جوابات جو ہیں وہ ہم ہی نہیں دیتے ہیں امریکہ میں بھی یونیورسٹیوں کے طالب علم Here are some of the answers history students gave in their papers. All of them were written by students from some of the most academically renowned universities of North America and Canada. History started in 1817. History as we know is always bias. Because human beings have to be studied by other human beings, not by independent observers of another species. <laughs> Zoroastri Zoroastrianism was founded by Zoro. Judaism was the first monolithic religion. It had one big god named Yahu. <laughs> Plato invented reality. He was a teacher to Harry Tottler. Harry as in H-A-R-R-Y, Tottle as in T-O-T-T-L-E. Europeans, epic lust was a must for the Epicureans. Others were vegetarians or synthetics who said, if you can't play with it, why bother? <laughs> the ancient Greeks founded the Olympics in about 1896. <laughs> Eventually, Christians started the new religion with sayings like, the mice shall inherit the earth. <laughs> Later, Christians fortunately abandoned the idea. In Europe, kings resented papal authority. The French king moved the popes to Arizona so he could keep an eye on them. <laughs> Machiavelli, who was often unemployed, wrote The Prince to Get a Job with Richard Nixon. The bubonic plague is a social disease in the sense that it can be transmitted by intercourse and other etc. <laughs> the plague also helped the emergence of English as the national language of England. My favorite is France was in a very serious state. Taxation was a great drain. Another problem was that France was full of French people. <laughs> In the beginning, when Thwastri came to the creation of woman, he found that he had exhausted his materials in the making of man, and that no solid elements were left. In this di dilemma, after profound meditation, he did as follows. He took the rotundity of the moon and the curves of the creepers and the clinging of tendrils and the trembling of grass and the slenderness of the reed and the bloom of flowers and the lightness of leaves and the tapering of the elephant's trunk and the glances of deer and the clustering of rows of bees and the gaiety of sunbeams and the weeping of clouds and the fickleness of the winds and the timidity of the hare 
and the vanity of the peacock and the softness of the parrot's bosom and the hardness of the adamant and the sweetness of honey and the cruelty of the tiger and the warm glow of the fire and the coldness of the snow and the chattering of jays and compounding all these things together he made woman. and gave her to man. <laughs> but after one week, man came to him and said, Lord, this creature that you have given me makes my life miserable. She chatters incessantly and teases me beyond endurance, never leaving me alone. And she requires incessant attention, takes all my time up and cries about nothing and is always idle. And so I have come to give her back again as I cannot live with her. The Twashtri said, very well, and took her back. Then, after another week, man came to him again and said, Lord, I find that my life is very lonely since I gave you back that creature. I remember how she used to dance for me and sing for me and look at me at the corner of her eye and play with me and cling to me and laugh with me and her laughter was filled with music and she was beautiful to look at and she was soft to touch, so please give her back to me again. So Thwashtri said, very well, and gave her back again. But then after only three days, man came to him again and said, Lord, I know not how it is, but after all, I have come to the conclusion that she is more of a trouble than a pleasure, so please take her back again. And Thwashtri said, out upon you, be off. I will have no more of this. You must manage how you can. And the man said, but I cannot live with her. And Thwashtri said, neither could you live without her. And he turned his back on man and went on with his work. 